Hi, I'm Dr. Andrew Strauss. I'm a chiropractor specializing in the conservative treatment of scoliosis. I've been in practice for 40 years and we're based right outside New York City. What does the diagnosis of rotoscoliosis mean? Scoliosis almost always has some twisting of the spine involved, and rotoscoliosis refers to a scoliosis that has more than the typical amount of twisting. Once the curve gets around 30 degrees or more, then you start to get a stronger twisting of the bones into the spine. In a mild scoliosis, say 20 degrees or less, you're gonna have some rotation, but that rotation's gonna be quite mild. This image was done to prepare for surgery, and the, this is a colorized 3D CT scan of the spine. There's a lot of radiation involved with this, and this is why it's not used except as preparation for surgical planning. So here we can see in this CT scan the strong twisting of the spine, which in this case is indicating the need for a surgical intervention. While the Cobb method is used to measure most scoliosis, once we get a severe rotoscoliosis, another method can be used called Ferguson's method, and that is more accurate with very large curves. We think of a scoliosis as being just a side-to-side -side displacement of the spine, but as we can see in this CT image, there's a strong twisting taking place, and Cobb angle measurement does not show the accuracy of the rotation in curves above 50 degrees. So in that situation, the Ferguson's method would be used to analyze the spine. Once the spine has the rotational element intensified in a rotoscoliosis, there's a torsion that takes place in the disc. Once the rotation of the spine gets above around 20 degrees, that torsion can cause displacement of the disc. We refer to this as a disc bulge, a disc herniation, a disc protrusion, a disc prolapse, or in very severe cases, it's called a disc extrusion. And this is where a small fragment of the disc will actually break off and float in the spinal canal. Depending upon where that fragment uh, rests will determine whether or not surgery is necessary in that case. The disc bulging, protrusion, or herniation can cause severe symptoms. For example, this is one of the cases where it may be necessary for the person to have a surgical intervention. I'm talking about very severe cases. I'm talking about a person who has intractable pain. In other words, not the, not mild pain that they get occasionally. We're talking about somebody that has the kind of pain where their consciousness is consumed by the pain. They can't think of anything else other than the pain. Or they get a loss of control of their bowels or bladder, or withering of a leg, for example. They might have one leg that's the normal size, the other leg becomes scrawny. In these situations, surgery is absolutely necessary. Here's an image of a disc herniation pressing on the nerve, and you can see here how that uh, the effect of that uh, nerve pressure is causing problems in the leg or the bladder in this situation. There can be severe problems associated with the disc protrusion or herniation, and here we can see an image of nerve pressure which is going from the back to the leg, and it, we can also see that it's affecting the bladder. So in these situations, you can get such severe symptoms that the person would actually require an operation. We have a network of surgeons that we will refer to if we have the need. We said that in rotoscoliosis, there's a strong twisting or rotation of the spine, hence the name roto or rotational scoliosis. Now there are essentially two types of scoliosis. There's functional scoliosis and structural scoliosis. Functional scoliosis is not gonna have any rotation. Structural scoliosis will always have rotational element. And here we can see on the x-ray the difference between the functional scoliosis and the structural scoliosis. And this is one of the ways that the diagnosis is made is by is there a twisting element. Structural scoliosis is the most common form is the idiopathic or no known cause. But structural scoliosis, we can always find some underlying problem, a very short leg, a congenital defect in the shape of the bone. There's going to be many different reasons why that person could have a functional scoliosis. Let's talk now about the treatment of rotoscoliosis. As I said earlier, in very severe cases of rotoscoliosis, it may be necessary for the person to have surgery. But I'm telling you, these are the very rare cases. Very severe pain, intractable pain, not manageable by any other means, loss of control of the bowels or bladder, withering of the muscles in the leg, but uh, these are very uncommon. The much more common case can be treated successfully through conservative means. For example, an exercise-based program, giving the person lifestyle advice, and in certain cases, even bracing. 
Bracing can be even used now in adults. We've seen the bracing is validated since 2016 in adults, and it's been validated much, much longer than that in children. And here we use many different types of braces, which I'm gonna talk about in another uh, video. The very large majority of rotoscoliosis can be successfully treated by conservative methods. And those conservative methods are geared to strengthening the core muscles, derotating the spine, and lifting the spine into correction. Now, we also will use braces in certain situations, and bracing has been validated in the scientific literature for adults even since 2016, and for children, that science has been supporting the bracing approach for many, many years. In the Strauss method, we use a combination of exercises, lifestyle advice, targeted stretching routines. We give a person active self-correction to teach them how to place themselves into corrected posture, and we will also use a variety of braces. We'll choose between a variety of braces. So here we can see a video montage that shows our in-office therapies. And you can see that there's a wide variety of therapies that are used to target the scoliosis. And we're using these therapies not only to improve the alignment, to get mobility into the spine, and to retrain the postural mechanism so that the person will hold the corrections. These therapy modalities are targeted individually for each patient. So each person is gonna get their own custom designed program of therapies here in the office to facilitate the correction that can be achieved through the home exercises and in specific cases, the use of a home brace. Here we can see two x-rays that are showing before and after treatment of the rotoscoliosis. I wanted to show you this because I want you to see that rotoscoliosis can be successfully treated with conservative methods. If you look at the film of the before film, you can see that there's a strong twisting of the spine and the, the large size of the curve. On the after film, you can see that the curve is reduced and there's also significantly reduced twisting or rotation of the spine. This is a successfully treated rotoscoliosis. Rotoscoliosis will have a very specific appearance because of the twisting that takes place in the spine. So when we look at the person's posture, we can see that if we look at them from behind, we can see that one waist will be flat and the other waist will be very indented. If the person bends forward to touch their toes, we'll see that one shoulder blade is gonna stick out prominently and the other shoulder blade is gonna be flat. So these are the evidences of the rotoscoliosis. All scoliosis could have one shoulder higher than the other, one hip higher than the other, but when you have for rotoscoliosis, you're going to have a very strong impression of the waist being uh, asymmetrical or the waist being indented on one side and flat on the other, and one shoulder blade much more prominent than on the other shoulder blade. Other visible signs may be that the head will be tipped off to the side, and we'll also sometimes see that one hand will be way lower than the other hand as the shoulders are on level. Think of a curved rod and the height of that rod, and then think if that rod were straight. So what happens is when you get strong rotoscoliosis, the person will lose height. This is very alarming for patients when they come in. The older patients will come and they'll say, I, I know I was 5'8", and now they're gonna be 5'6", or 5'5", and you can lose a significant amount of height due to the rotoscoliosis as the body collapses. This is a very common phenomenon in rotoscoliosis called postural collapse. And we can see here a picture of a person who's in postural collapse, and obviously they've lost a lot of height. 